you want to come do Sugar Shack with us tomorrow? <laughs> yeah, of course. The Sugar Shack. <laughs> I love it, dude. That's awesome. That's a- Such a vibe here, man. I'm stoked. It was like more tiny. Yeah. In person. <laughs> Doing what, what we can with what we got. That's kind of fire. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Whatever. Hey, whatever, whatever. whatever man. You're doing something. Oh, you're the man. Um, hmm. Dude, look at the size of this bubble. No, I'm going to grab it. Shit. Oh! Uh, did you get, it? get it? No, no close, dude. Get my Bruce Lee on. Uh. Yo, what's the sugar, 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 Sit back, relax, because it's time for another podcast. Yeah. What's happening, everybody? This is Bryce. I'm the host of the Sugar Shack podcast. Another episode here at an awesome Sugar Shack Sessions experience. I'm sitting down with Shwayze. Come on, give it up, everybody. Incredible session, man. But right now, I'm shwasted. Shwasted. Hell <laughs> yeah. That's the only way to do it, bro. No, Absolutely. I'm just Amazing session. Did you guys enjoy session tonight? As oh, always, yeah. we just want to thank our amazing bar chartreuse for being here and slinging drinks. Shout out to Chef Greg and Jerry for an amazing dinner tonight. We had some good food. Welcome, everybody. How we feeling? Feeling good? How you feeling, man? I feel phenomenal. I feel yeah. really good, yeah. Dude, session was incredible. Thank Did you. Did a fantastic job. How you feeling about it? I feel very good about it. It was really fun. You know, we haven't done too many of those... Uh, acoustic vibes like that you know um and the vip meet and greets on the last tour we did it a little bit so it's nice to kind of get it in front of the cameras and in front of a nice live audience like that it was really fun dude it sounded really cool man you kind of uh you were telling me earlier you kind of like we're working and piecing your band together a little bit so how did you meet your band from tonight's session yeah so um i actually hit my boy greg from cashed out cool. and uh he he recommended uh, Tony, my guitar player. And, Shout uh, out to Tony. <laughs> Mad love to Tony. Sexy beast. He's over there <laughs> filming on the With side. With the hair, bro. The hair is so on point. Man. I know. He already and, knows. And so, you know, <laughs> I love social media and stuff. So you know, I, I went through another guitar. I, I used another guitar player at one point, And I remember I was on tour with him. And I just met Tony via text message and stuff. And Tony sent me a couple of videos of him jamming my songs. And I was like, dang, Tony's dope, man. Yeah. And I was already yeah. with another guitar player, so I felt bad. But I was like, <laughs> I was like, next tour. Next tour. <laughs> we're going to do some stuff. And, um, and so it worked out great. And then it was crazy because um, my, my, my friend Reef, who uh, is the bass player for Surfer Girl, yeah. um, Reef's done some stuff with me as well. Yeah. And Reef separately uh, recommended Daniel, my drummer, and so uh, I had no idea that Daniel and Tony were actually friends. So I hit them both up separately, not knowing that they were connected at all. And then, like, at the first rehearsal, they found out. They're like, yo, I'm going to work with Swayze. And Daniel was like, I'm going to work with Swayze, too. <laughs> That's awesome. So, you know, when it works out, it works out. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And um, so, I, so they've been rocking with me for a few months now. And um, they're in another band, actually, called Bikini Trill. But, you know, when they're not touring, they kind of come out and work with me. And uh, it's been amazing, you know, like, um, uh, I love them both. And then, and then last night, we just took out another band called Of Good Nature, another oh, amazing yeah. band. And um, we just did about a month tour with Of Good Nature, and we brought out with those guys. And they came out, because they had a day off last night, and they came out and saw us in Jacksonville, was it? Tour life is crazy. I don't even know where the fuck we were last night. <laughs> last night, we were in Jacksonville, and uh, two in the morning, Tony and I are with their bass player, and we're like, "You want to come do Sugar Shack with us tomorrow?" <laughs> Sick. And literally, we jacked him and took him, took us, took him in our van. And on the way here, he learned the whole set. I love and, it. And uh, he was an integral part tonight. So yeah, you know, um, just really blessed to like be around really good musicians. Like when you're on tour and stuff like this, the most important thing is to have a cool crew around you. You yeah. know what I mean? Because you're sleeping in close, close quarters. You're doing everything together. And um, and I'm just really lucky to have, have found these guys. Yeah. Well, it definitely showed, man. Like, you guys had great chemistry. People were loving it, dude. People were dancing. We were jamming out here, man. Heck it was yeah. awesome. Such a vibe here, man. I'm stoked. Yeah, dude. It's awesome. We love it. We love having you guys here. And The Sugar Shack. So so how did you how did you hear about Sugar Shack? Like, what made you want to, like, come here and do this? My boy Adam actually... Um, uh, over at Ineffable Records, um, we actually did a partnership and put this my last album out together. And um, the last time I was in Florida, uh, a while back, 
that was the first time I heard of you guys because he was like, yo, you should do Sugar Shack. And I was like, okay. And then I checked it out and it was super dope. I saw uh, a few of um, my peers on here doing some stuff. And I was like, yeah, but, uh, you know, we, we, we just haven't been touring in this part of Florida. Right. Um, and then recently I did like a little thing in the Virgin Islands with, um, with Dan Kelly from um, Fortunate Youth. And, uh, and uh, his wife, who's like his manager, she was so cool. <laughs> yeah, we were like drinking. Awesome. She was like, you need to do Sugar Shack. And I'm like, <laughs> and like she just put me on a group text with the boys, like yeah. at the airport. I didn't even ask. They, like, you were there, right? Yeah. So yeah. we're on a group text all of a sudden. And then so, you know, we, we started texting for the last like month or so. And, um, you know, I had this last floor to run. And I wasn't even anywhere close to here. Like, you know, Jacksonville, it's kind of far from here, but... You know, um, the stars aligned, you know. Um, I hit the boys up, and they kind of made space for me. You know, I don't know if someone canceled or whatever the heck happened, but that shit worked out. So well, we heard Swayze was in town. We were like, shit, let's do it. Let's go. Let's, let's go. go. <laughs> so I hit my tour manager, Brandon. I'm like, Brandon, we got to figure out Sugar Shack. And, you know, we, we made a little drive, but it was well worth it. We're so happy to be here, man. And yeah. um, it just worked out perfectly. So happy to be here. Dude, stoked, man. First impressions just with the crew, and I mean, you hear about a lot of people coming through and stuff. How's your night been? Incredible. Sick. Incredible. You just have to be here to really feel the vibe. When I walked up, and the band feels the same, but when we walked up and saw, like, the little stage, it just made me feel, like, good. I was just like, look at this. <laughs> I was like, look at this little situation. <laughs> this little I didn't situation. know it was like that. It was, like, more tiny. Yeah. In person. You never, you never want to hear that, fellas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Facts. Um, but it works here, I guess. We make the best of it, right? We use it well. It made me happy, though. I love to, <laughs> I love to <laughs> make the best That's of what right. you got, huh? That's right. <laughs> Do what, what we can with what we got. That's what it's all about. No, but uh, it, that actually made me feel more comfortable. Like I, I like that little tight space, and um, yeah, it, it's a, it's amazing here. Out back, there's a beautiful lake out here. Obviously, we're from California, so we're out here looking for gators and shit. <laughs> you got any gators out there? They're like, yes, motherfucker, there's gators. Yeah. <laughs> you know, straight Cali boys. We, we were looking, though. We couldn't find shit, but we were looking. Anyway, just a good vibe. And all the, the crew, everyone involved, people who came, thank you guys. You guys are all awesome. And yeah. Oh, yeah. You guys are awesome, man. That's what we look for, yeah, man. Shout out to our crew, man. Shout out to our hospitality crew for just crushing it tonight. Come on. We love y'all. We appreciate you. Thank you yeah. so much. Amazing. Amazing Absolutely. crew. Amazing crew. Amazing crew. Yeah. So man, you've got some you've got some cool history. I mean, some of the even the songs that you kind of curated for your session tonight, like Buzzin' and and Corona and Lime, like these were like Billboard hits for you when you released them. Dude, look at the size of this bug. No, I'm gonna grab it. Shit. Oh, oh. Uh, did you get, it? get it? No, no close. He, he jumped around. He jumped around. Dude. I was gonna try to <laughs> get my Bruce Lee on. Uh, uh. <laughs> Like my hair touched me afterwards. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, ah. <laughs> Instant karma. Uh, yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the song. No, you're good. Yeah, man. I mean, like, that was kind of like your kickoff, right? I mean, uh, that's a big kickoff. Or, like, tell me the, or I guess, let me start this way. Tell me the origin of Shwayze for you in, in your music career. Yeah, so um, I grew up in Malibu, California, um, Beach Town. Really chill. Uh, I got into music, you know, and like around middle school, high school times. I like, um, I've always been attracted to the sound of the acoustic guitar. I don't know why, but for some reason, like, I had a buddy, Andrew Martin. Holy shit, I haven't ta thought about Andrew for a minute. Shout out to Andrew Martin, wherever you are <laughs> in the world. But my boy Andrew always come up with sick guitar melodies in high school. So that's when I started writing raps. And I started writing music you know, writing raps to the guitar melodies and stuff like that. And, um, you know, Malibu's really laid back, really beach vibes, just feel good, you know, barbecues on the beach. We, we, we used to party in, like, empty lots, like, where mansions were about to be built, but they weren't. So we'd find these little lots and just party in the lots. Like, I don't know. How, like, that was our thing in Malibu and shit like that. So, I don't know. Um, that's kind of, like, my vibe. And I met... Um, my first producer, Cisco Adler, back in the day. And, um, yeah, we just were making these little jams, these little feel-good, acoustic, uh, heavy, uh, melody-heavy jams, you know? Yeah. And um, that's kind of where I started, and I've always loved just making people feel good. You know, I've never really gone too crazy 
as far as like I don't know. I, I my whole vibe is just to kind of be the life of the party, mm. and th that's that's when I started, and that's how I kind of like um, started out, you know. And I've been blessed. Like when, it's funny because when I first started making music, I was kind of insecure about what people would think about it because I was just talking about like barbecues and <laughs> hanging out with girls on the beach and shit like that. You know what I mean? But look, um, all these years later, people come up to me and they tell me that their music has like helped help them get out of depression or like yeah. just been like the soundtrack to their lives and you know i've just been really blessed to like do what i love you know yeah i know it's it's so cool yeah come on that's awesome like so sick uh, i mean it's true man it's happening because the other night as soon as we confirmed booking it was like it'd been a long day i, I hadn't gotten a chance to like catch up with my wife we're in bed and i said uh do you know who's coming to monday's session she said who i said do you know who Swayze is she said Swayze's coming? <laughs> she said that was like the soundtrack to our boat days out on the wow. beach and on the water. And it's like so many stories of people like coming to session tonight being like, yo, I listen to this song and that song and listen to you and, and all of those activities right, that right. you wanted to, people right. to be jamming to, you know? That so I was doing awesome. it myself, you know? Yeah, you were living it. And yeah. so it was just coming out naturally and organically. That's awesome, man. That's like the main thing, just making it organic and not trying too hard and... Yeah. Telling the truth. Yeah. Um, but you, since then, you put out a lot of music. Yeah. I mean, you've gone through a lot of different evolutions and stuff. Man. Totally, totally. Do yeah. you share some about that? Just kind of like the middle stages of, of your projects and things like that. Hmm. Well, you know, I think when you love something, like I just love making music. I love creating music. There's like a vibe, like when you get into the studio or like, or you just sit with an acoustic guitar and the vibes are right, right? So like me... Um, I just love to create. I'm not one of those crazy prolific writers, though, that, like, sit and write all the time. I did do that for a small amount of time, but I kind of write, and I go crazy for writing for a minute at a time, and then I have to go live yeah, and, like, experience stuff and, like, go on tour and, like, take trips, yeah. and then I come back, you know, and, and that's kind of, like, what it's been like. You know, it's just, like, uh, very autobiographical. And, um, and yeah, most recently... Um, it was actually during COVID. I hate to bring COVID back up. Like, we're so far out of that shit. But, uh, you know, during COVID, it, it gave me time to settle down because I was doing a lot of, uh, a little, a lot of touring. And um, I got to settle down and just kind of, like, reevaluate what I was going to do musically. And um, I think one of the first things that inspired this new wave that I'm on, my, my, my friends, the Common Kings, we, we've been trying to write for a while. Shout out to Common Kings, yeah. Common Kings are great, and um, that's my hair again. I keep on thinking there's a bug. It's my fucking <laughs> dreadlock. It could be a bug, bro. It could be. Um, but Common Kings and I, like, I, I we'd done a few festivals, and, and we'd cross paths a bunch. And um, I sent them some demos, and then they sent me the demo for this song called California Day. And, um, you know, that kind of really inspired. I was like, ooh, this is a vibe, you know? And I sent my verse back, and we dropped that as a single. And the response to that was crazy. We didn't really have any kind of push behind it at all, and we and it's doing it's it did it did really well for both of us, you know. And I was like, okay, like this Cali reggae yeah, hip hop right. thing. That was like your introduction, kind of to this. Kind of. I mean, bit. I've always been like parallel to it because mm -hmm. I even my second or third tour I ever went on, I, I did a slightly stupid and revolution tour mm -hmm. way back in the day, and then I also did like a pepper tour. So I've 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 been right there. Yeah. And I've, always, I've, I've been invited to like a bunch of reggae festivals over the years where my music hasn't been necessarily reggae, but um, it's just feel good music. So it kind of fits, mm -hmm. I guess. But um, after I did that song, I kind of consciously was like, okay, like, let me kind of make some stuff fully about like with this vibe, mm -hmm. you know? And so I reached out to some of my friends, the Dirty Heads, and we got Common King. Common Kings actually is on the album, but you know, I got the Dirty Heads, I got Pepper on the album. Uh, the Elevators, which is really great, um, really great band. Um, I did some stuff for Surfer Girl, so I just started just like you know reaching out to some some peers and some buddies and and, and kind of putting some stuff together. And yeah. um, it, it as long as it's organic and it feels good and it's not trying too hard and it kind of just kind of flowed, just like being here tonight. Like it, it just when shit's right, it's right kind of thing. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that's how it's been and. Um, uh, yeah, I've been putting out a lot of music over the years. If you're just hearing about me right now, go check out all the stuff that I have. Because I have, like, <laughs> yeah. I think 
maybe nine albums out at this point. You know, Dude, it's and awesome. um, yeah, I think it's all good. So <laughs> hell yeah, that's what this is most important. Absolutely, I think it's all good. I um, I mean, in, in in all of those releases and stuff, is there is there something that stands out to you as like most memorable? Or like greatest achievement moment for you that you were as an artist you were like man I'm really proud of that. Honestly, I'm like it's like it's so cliche, but all my music is like my babies. Like I love all the albums. Like the fact that I was able to put out a project, um, whatever project it was, you know, it's really cool. Um, you know, at these shows that I have or these festivals, people come up to me and they tell me like a random song that I would never think anyone knows. They're like. This song is my favorite song. I'm like, really? How the fuck do you hear that shit? <laughs> That's your favorite song? Really? The deep dive. They got those deep cuts. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, I live awesome. by this thing that every song is someone's favorite song. Yeah. And that kind of helps me when I create too. Because, you know, as an artist, you get insecure. Or you're hard on yourself. You're your biggest critic. And then, um, but I'm just like, yo, like, if it feels right, I'm, I'm, I'm going to drop it. Because someone maybe will connect with mm-hmm. it, you know? And um, so, but... uh. Yeah, I mean, they all feel like accomplishments to me. Like, I'm really proud of this most recent album I dropped, honestly. Because um, I've, I've been in the game so long now, not to age myself, but, you know, my first album <laughs> dropped in 2008. And so when I'm dropping this new one just recently and I'm, I'm going to shows and everyone's singing the new stuff, I'm like, okay, still got it, baby. Yeah, hell yeah, you do, bro. And that's, like, yeah. Grammy-nominated or what's going it was, on? It was Grammy-considered. Grammy-considered, okay, okay. Whatever. Hey, whatever, whatever. Was, whatever, man. You doing <laughs> some? You may, some people. The Grammys don't get finally considered. noticed me. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. Anybody got question? A question for Swayze? What's up, Julia? Uh, first of all, I was not expecting to hear Lauren Hill tonight. That was really sick. Let's go. Nice. Uh, of course, my pleasure. Yeah, so she asked if Lauryn Hill was one of my influences. Um, The Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, that album, blew me away. When I was a kid, holy shit. (laughs) Am I allowed to curse on here? Yeah, of course. (laughs) Be yourself, It's too late now, anyway. (laughs) We've already crossed that. (laughs) But yeah, that album did a lot for me. But I've had so many interesting um, influences. You know, I, I I think it was more like high school time when I was trying to find myself just as a person. I, I, I didn't even think that I was going to be necessarily an artist yet. I, I always wanted to be an actor first, you know what I mean? But music kind of just happened. But yeah, Lauren Hill was a huge inspiration. Uh, of course, Bob Marley. Um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Really, yeah. Red Hot Chili Peppers were a big influence on me, bro. Like, yeah. I was listening to all their shit. Um, uh, so many, man. I mean, rock stuff. Even Led Zeppelin, like... Um, I was like, I didn't grow up in Malibu too. Like, I don't know. I just was listening to so much different stuff. Um, Outcast, huge inspiration for me. Um, yeah. So, but shit. What was the question? That's what, it. You my, nailed my, it. My That's it. <laughs> you you got it. <laughs> that tequila, man. That tequila way. <laughs> she. Ow, 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 ow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody yeah. got another question? Anybody else got another question? Thanks for that question. What's up? Scott Wheels. Scott Wheels. What's up, G? Thank you. Where's your name come from? Swayze. I gotta, I gotta give my, 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 uh, my love to my boy, Cisco Adler. We were just in the studio one day, and we were just trying to figure that shit out. I think we did watch Patrick Swayze Roadhouse, like, <laughs> Hell yeah. two days before. Swayze too. And we were, just, we were just throwing out names. We were throwing out names. He was like, what about Swayze? I was like, Swayze? And I was like, that's kind of fire. <laughs> so then, so then, like a couple of days later, I'll never forget because I was trying to figure out what I was doing too. Like I was working construction at the time. I was like, I was like, how can I make dough? I was like, I, I was like about to. I was going to real estate school. I was trying to get my real estate license and shit like that. I didn't finish. I went to like two days. And I never, <laughs> but we 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 started making the song buzzing, and um, I, I did two verses of buzzing. And then I went to real estate school. I got picked up. I was like, okay, I got to go. I'll leave. And then um, Mickey Avalon, who's a dope artist. I don't know if you guys ever heard of Mickey Avalon. He's a dope artist. Check him out if you don't know who he is. Um, I left real estate school and I came back and Mickey Avalon had done a third verse to Buzzin'. 
which is unreleased. I don't even know where it is. But he said, yo, Shways. Like, so he kind of solidified, like, the, I was me called Shwayze because he said it in a song. At the time, like, Sh- like, Mickey was, like, you know, blowing up at the time. So I was like, oh, shit, I guess it's official, you know? So Hell yeah. I remember at the time, I changed my MySpace at the time, not to age myself. <laughs> I, went, I went to MySpace, which was Aaron Smith at the time, my, my real name, and I switched to Shwayze. And I'll never forget this one girl. I remember her, and I'm not going to say her name, but she <laughs> texted me. She was like, Really? Your your name is Shwayze now? She's like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Oh, snap. You showed her, bro. People are harsh, man. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'm keeping it. And I and I held strong. And then like years later, she's like, Shwayze! Yeah, right. Can I get tickets to the show? I'm like, yes, but I remember that shit. <laughs> I love it, dude. That's awesome. <laughs> Any other questions for him? What's up? So you're blowing up, obviously. Appreciate you. Uh, how do I keep myself leveled? Blowing up. Thank you. Thank you for, for saying that. Oh, you're the man. Um, hmm. I think that I was just raised by a really strong... Um, a really strong woman, my grandmother. I was raised by my grandparents, my grandmother and grandfather. And uh, I don't know. I just had a really good base. Like, I, I, I can't have an ego, essentially. And, um, you know, I have an amazing son now, also. He's 12 years old, Hendrix. Shout out to Hendrix. Hell yeah. So I want to lead a, a good example for him as well. And um, honestly, I'm just really blessed. I feel really fortunate to do what I do. Like, I get to come out here and play music and drink tequila and, like, <laughs> talk to you guys. Like, you know what I mean? And that's my life. So I, I try not to take things too seriously. And, um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really appreciative of everything. So, yeah, I just ride the wave. And that's oh, what yeah. it is, man. Super blessed. But thank you, for, thank you for that. And thank you for saying yeah. those things. Great question, sweet. Michael. Yeah, hell yeah. yeah really Dude, cool. so uh, what you got coming up? What's on the horizon for you? Man, I got so many shows coming up. Um... I'm riding this wave of this new music that I'm putting out. I was going to drop some new music again this summer because I was like, I was feeling so vibey and I have so many unreleased songs. But like, you know, this last album I dropped, Shui Season, excuse me, um, I just think there's so many good songs on it still to be discovered. So I'm going to like let one more summer happen and let that marinate one more summer. Let everyone vibe with it. Go play some music with some friends. And, uh, and go see some people like this. And then, you know, I'm already making the, 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 the project for next summer. So uh, stay tuned for that. I have some cool features already on the horizon. Nice. And, um, and I'm, 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 I love acting and, and theater and cinema. So, you know, keep an eye out for me on, that, on those kind of things as well. Hell yeah, dude. Sick, man. Yeah, yeah. Stoked to see just what comes out of this. Stoked to see these sessions and see yeah, where likewise. you're at and, and just where the project takes you, man. But thanks so much for coming and making the drive. Man, and doing my pleasure. This, dude. this yeah. was an epic time. Come on, give it up one more time for Shwayze and his band, everybody. Make sure you follow him on social media. Go follow him, listen to his music on Spotify. Share this podcast with friends. We love y'all so much. That's a wrap on this episode of the Sugar Shack Podcast. Peace. Thank you guys.